Hello everybody, I am Challenger Jacku and welcome back to the finale of our Noring Challenge series, where we take on the final half of Sonic Roblast 2 to see where it's possible to complete it without collecting any rings. If you haven't checked out the previous episode, I highly recommend you do so and the links will be in the description below. However, before we begin, if you love Sonic content or challenge videos in general, and you want to see more content like this on the channel, do me a favour and smash the subscribe button, like the video and hit that naughty bell. You guys came out and smashed the initial goal, thank you so much for your continuous support. And if you have any ideas for future challenge ones that you'd like to see me tackle on the channel, slip down there below and I'll definitely see what I can do. Now, without any further ado, let's jump straight in. Fun fact, Red Volcano Zone, at least at the time of this recording in version 2.2 .2 of the game, is the only zone to have one act. Whilst Act 2 is being worked on behind the scenes, we haven't really seen much of it. But yeah, Red Volcano Zone is actually a really awesome stage. In the older versions of SRB2, it was just your generic fire level, nothing really all that interesting. In 2.2, this zone has received a massive glow up, carving out an identity of its own as a volcano set in the exotic jungle, filled with lava, cool set pieces, lava, bandits such as the petrobites that want you exterminated, and last but not least, don't forget the lava. My biggest fear here was obviously the godly amount of lava. Whilst it is avoidable, a lot of the time you need to maintain your speed in order to beat the cycle of its movement. Something I clearly suck at as I died a few jumps away from the spawning area, in an attempt to avoid the petrobites with a chaos snap. Now these birds are the worst things I've ever come across in the Sonic game. Yeah, even worse than the bloody slicers. From a distance, they look pretty harmless, right? Just circling the air without a care in the world. Well, this is just the front, as the moment you even get closer then, they will swoop down instantly and grab you. Whilst they can't really damage you in this state, they can keep you immobile for a period of time, until they decide to drop you oftentimes over a pit of lava, meaning that you're just simply unable to recover at all. If we could take a hit, that would be fine, but under the stipulation of the run, they are quite literally the spawn of Satan himself. On the next attempt, we were just fast enough to beat the cycle of the lava. Chaos snapping to safety the moment one of the petrobites locked onto Shadow. From here, leaping from platform to platform proves simple, as long as we avoided the falling lava and the bandits that can damage you through their ignition, reaching the first checkpoint beside the sea of lava. Obviously, trying to cross this with Shadow will be a death sentence. Thankfully, to the left, there are these boulders that are surrounded by rings. Oh, great. In all seriousness, it's easy enough to get on them, as Sonic Team Jr. had the mercy to leave a large enough gap in between the rings allowing us to jump on top of the boulder and ride it across the lava ocean Super Monkey Ball style. Whilst it isn't as precise to control as say Super Monkey Ball, the boulder works with your momentum so as long as you take your time and remain in constant motion, you shouldn't have too much trouble reaching the other side. Chaos Snap into safety once the gap was small enough for Shadow to bridge himself. After a few more jumps we evade another set of the monster birds successfully reaching the next checkpoint, revealing two potential pathways for us to take. On the right side we can try and use the spring down below to reach the next section, forcing us to pass more of the demon birds. Or we could go through the shaft in the wall and ride the platform up to the ledge. I think it's obvious which way we're going here. Well, after taking another L because I misjudged the reach of Chaos Snap, falling straight into the lava below. From here, the next checkpoint laid at the end of this obstacle course of jumps. I'm pretty sure the route I took here is a Knuckles pathway, as there's no feasible way for Sonic to actually clear this road because of the height of the ledge upon going underneath the ceiling of springs. Thanks to Shadow's Chaos Snap though, we could clear this no problem, reaching yet another border section which is far longer than the last. Whilst the first boulder crossing served to get you accustomed with how it interacts with your momentum, this section of the stage essentially puts what you've learned to the test, forcing you to traverse the cavern that is stacked to the brim with bandits, springs, hazards and of course the raining lava. I don't really have any advice for this section as it all depends on which part of the cycle you begin the section on. All I can really say is don't hesitate, just keep on the move and get through the section as fast as you can. Since there aren't any rings placed here at all, you can place all of your focus on the falling lava, and sure enough we reach the next section of the stage upon leaping through the cavern thanks to the cluster springs on the higher pathway. Taking inspiration from a Mario Kaizo stage, the checkpoint is beyond this sea of lava, reachable once we platformed across the four stone footholds, scorched by the spiralling fire bars. We really can't catch a break here, can we? Now I have to be honest, whilst this did take me a few tries, it wasn't really the fire bars that were throwing me off. They certainly didn't help matters, however most of my death stemmed from trying to avoid the rings on the footholds. Whilst timing our jumps so we could land in between the fire bars was bad enough, the rings circling the platforms only served to heighten my nerves. Combined with the fact we will be sent back to the last border section if we fucked up, this portion is just utter bollocks quite frankly. Now once we were finally successful in landing on the first platform, barely dodging the fire bar in the process, the rest of this harrowing section slowly clicks into place. Utilising the Chaos Snap as a safety net of sorts, slowly but surely we cross the sea of lava sending shadows 
skyward so we could avoid the rotation of the fire before landing safely reaching the next checkpoint with about 10 years off my lifespan. Unfortunately, we're still not done, as right after the checkpoint we're forced on a very restricted cabin filled with tiny platforms that have rings placed along them, raining lava from all corners and of course a stupid spike orbital that will mess you up just for the fun of it. I would actually argue that this portion is even harder despite having a checkpoint to respawn at, given that your jumps need to be precise whilst dodging most of the hazards in your way. Although eventually I discovered if you intentionally take the jumps to the first platform wide, this lines you up nicely allowing you to leap on the inside of the next platform avoiding the Arbonaut entirely. From here, it's just a game of precision. Focus your jumps to the edge of the tiny platform so you can evade the cluster of rings in the centre, and with a lucky chaos snap you can finally escape this hellhole. One thing that I find bizarre about this stage in particular is that Shadow can usually phase through solid objects and even lasers with the chaos snap, but for some reason the waterfalls of lava are immune to this for some reason. Are they made out of brick walls or something? Now this section could be rather deceiving. The jump to the final section of the stage is relatively simple made complicated by the awkward timing of the lava falls. They move so slowly that you think you have more time than you actually do between intervals, so if you hesitate odds are that you will die. So as soon as the lava ceases, swiftly jump onto one of the two floating platforms ahead, and then jump onto the one beside it before it collapses underneath you. The moment the lava disperses, leap to safety and you should be fine. With this and a few well timed jumps we finally reach the final portion of the stage. In order to reach the rocket that will take us to Egg Man's secret base, Egg Rock Zone, we must cross the Tetris Lava Lake whilst avoiding the Bannocks and of course the Wave of Lava. Well, in theory. I have no idea why this is the case, however for some reason a specific portion of the lava actually has collision that you can stand on without taking damage. I found this out by complete accident on my very first playthrough of the game. Unfortunately, the setup to land on this part of the lava is actually fairly easy to pull off. Just run and jump, that's all there is to it. If you're able to land on the lava wave at its peak, Shadow is able to land on it safely, providing us an extra jump that we can use to cross the section without any problems. And with that, we complete Red Volcano Zone without collecting any rings. Egg Rock Zone serves as the final zone with traditional action stages in the game, and with that said it's certainly worthy of such an honour, boasting some of the most precision intensive platforming sections and hazardous set pieces that will truly test your knowledge of everything you've learned thus far. It even incorporates a gravity mechanic in a similar vein to Crazy Gadget, although it's far more drunkier. A helpful tip is that you can actually change the camera option in the settings, so the camera will also rotate with you in these sections, meaning you can just play them with virtually normal gravity. Right from the start we are greeted with two pathways, usually I like to take the left route as it's by far the easiest and quicker way to go. We unfortunately hit a brick wall upon clearing the first gravity room however as we need to use these vents to reach the next part of the stage. Vents that unfortunately house three rings and since it's an automated section there's sadly no way to avoid these. It sucks but we have no choice but to traverse the harder route on the right, gradually making our way through this hallway which only heightens my fear of enclosed spaces. Now with some characters they're actually short enough for you to just stand in place without getting crushed. However with Shadow we just need to roll before the descending crushes reach us which lowers him enough to save him from certain death. Once the pillar rises, you can cancel the roll by simply jumping, rinse and repeat, until we reach a bottomless room with extremely low gravity upon hitting the next checkpoint. Now don't let this area fool you, whilst yeah you can lose a life here extremely easily if you mess up, the low gravity gives you more than enough time to manoeuvre your way through this section no problem. You can even skip a number of the platforms clearing this part with one jump if you're comfortable enough. With all of that said though, err on the side of caution. The walls along the corridor are actually electrified which will damage you if you get too close to them. However, after a number of simple jumps, we reach these gravity things that are really awkward to use. What you're supposed to do is stand underneath them and only jump out once Shadow is touching the ceiling. This will flip the gravity again, giving you enough height to clear the section. Because of my camera settings, we almost failed this as I thought I had already reached the ceiling, only to be just above the bottomless pit once gravity returned to normal. Thankfully, I was able to react quickly enough to use the Chaos Nut to reach the next gravity shifter, but that had the potential to end catastrophically. Upon reaching the next checkpoint we're placing yet another room that makes great use of the shifting gravity mechanic, through these pods that we need to stand in so we can flip the room on its head. The problem was the ring trail stemming out of them, and as I wasn't entirely sure if we could avoid them by standing along the edge of the circle, I opted to just avoid them completely by using Shadow's greater mobility to hop over the numerous laser gates. That was until we reached the final pod that required us to flip the gravity and sure enough yeah it is possible to avoid the rings here as the game will kinda just drop Shadow from the ceiling, allowing you to just carefully move out the way midair. Doing so leads us to a spring with a ring trail in its bounce path, my heart immediately sinking upon noticing this. It turns out that you don't even need to hit the springs here, as the ledge is low enough for Shadow to reach with a basic jump, bringing us to the next section beyond the elevator shaft. 
Normally, we would have to use these mini elevators to scale this next section. The Chaos Snap came in clutch here though, allowing us to simply jump to the top, which is actually a lot safer. Thanks to the speed of these things combined with the low gravity, it's actually pretty easy to be crushed here whilst taking the intended route. Scaling the staircase before it completely floods, we reach the next checkpoint, using the Chaos Snap to dash across the spike filled pits. Usually, you would have to use the disappearing platform to gradually make your way across, but I'd rather avoid it because it's a lot easier. Riding along the floating platform, we need to use the spin dash cancel in order to duck under underneath the barricade so Shadow isn't pushed off the platform. To do this, simply charge a spin dash, allowing us to slip underneath the obstacles and then jump before releasing the spin button. Shadow will jump instead of dashing into the pit below, and it's unfortunately here where our run hits a brick wall. You see, we need to enter the vent that will take us to the final part of the stage after a brief 2D section. Unlike before though, there aren't any rings placed within the vents themselves, and as long as we can get through this section, the stage will be beatable ringless. It's just that thanks to the one ring placed right before the vent, I couldn't find a way to squeeze into the hole without collecting it. Now I tried with both Shadow and Tails, thinking Tails might just be able to thanks to his smaller size, but apparently not. It sucks to think that this one ring is all that stands in our way from a successful run, but alas, it wasn't to be. Adding a measly ring to our tally, we complete the first act of Egg Rock Zone. Ultimately, we failed the challenge, but I'll be honest in saying that I wasn't too beat up about it at the time, as Egg Rock Act 2 is actually my second favourite stage in this entire game. This place has it all, from the music that encapsulates the 90s with its remarkable similarity to Michael Jackson's Beat It, to the memorable set pieces such as the Dash for air in the outer space sections, or the returning turrets of Techno Hill Zone in the room blocked off by the laser gates, pushing your reaction time to the test. And whilst it still makes use of the gravity flick gimmick from the previous act, Act 2 does so sparingly, the stage possessing a far superior flow to it that really feels satisfying to dash through whilst maintaining your momentum and speed. Right from the start, there's a cool skip you can do with most characters to skip the first gravity flip. Whilst the level remains pitch black, spin dash jump forward and you can reach the higher ledge that leads to the first checkpoint without going out of your way to change the gravity. With Shadow, we can also just care snap up there, hitting the first checkpoint and avoiding the laser blade with a well timed jump. The second checkpoint is literally just ahead, forcing us to traverse the outside of the space station. Granted it isn't too difficult as the pathway is rather short, but you only have 5 seconds of air before you lose a life. As long as you land on the first platform upon entering the outside, the low gravity really does allow you to leap over large distances, so you shouldn't really have too much trouble here. Miraculously chaos snapping through both of Eggman's death traps, we die due to a bloody precise shot from the snail bandit on the wall. They shoot you from a distance, so whilst it's pretty simple to avoid, the accuracy of that shot was just incredible. We were able to avoid it on the next attempt though, scaling the station through the myriad of floating platforms to reach the next checkpoint and another outer space segment, once we somehow avoid the shots of both of the snails placed on either side of the opening. The thing that takes so the next section is on the other side of the space station, which is quite a bit of ground to cover considering we only have 5 seconds. Now there is this water square that actually gives you oxygen in the middle of this entire section, so if you take the anti-gravital pad you can restore the time of dirt and reach the vent with no issues. Instead we just avoid the gravity change completely, using the chaos snap to reach the higher platform making it with only 2 seconds to spare. This actually unlocks a door we couldn't access before and once we jump down the staircase to hit the next checkpoint, we reach my personal favourite part of the stage, the turret room. Now the turret room is literally just a small square, however it's filled with some of the most deadly traps in the game. From the laser gates that we must weave from side to side to pass, all the while leaping over the bottomless pits and avoiding both the turrets and the snail bandits in one free flowing movement. Needless to say on a regular playthrough you have to be quick if you don't want to resemble Swiss cheese. And that rings true here as well. Our boy Shadow on the other hand can literally just kill snap through the lasers and escape this place in mere seconds. I'm not kidding, this is actually how I found out about his ability to phase through hazards on my very first playthrough with a mod. You can even skip this section with Sonic ironically enough, as there is a space between the wall and the laser gates that you can just about squeeze through. Sadly, it's just after the turret room where the stage comes from an abrupt end. You see, once we enter the next vent in the wall that takes us to a room that basically consists of a bottomless pit, we're forced to collect a total of 9 rings during this automated section, and to my knowledge there is no other way for us to possibly go to avoid this, raising our overall total to 10 rings. Well, actually, there might be a way to avoid the nine rings in this tunnel with Shadow specifically. You see, sometimes if you enter the vents by spin dashing into them, for some reason it doesn't transition into an automated section, and you have full control over your character. By forcing this, it might actually be possible to avoid the nine rings here using Shadow's Chaos Snap, but I didn't do this for one main reason. Whilst yet, yeah, I've been using a mod character up until this point, I felt okay with doing so as everything been skipped up until now is possible with at least one of the base characters in the vanilla game. With this, if it's only possible using Shadow as a mod character, and impossible to do with the vanilla characters of the game, I just don't feel comfortable with saying it's beatable if you have to use a mod in order to avoid these specific rings. It sucks because just like Act 1, the rest of the stage whilst difficult is entirely possible to beat Ringless with Shadow. Once we've scaled further up the station, we're forced along a conveyor belt filled with a ton of traps. From crushing blocks that will either come down from the ceiling or out of the side of the walls, lasers to chaos snap through and even those damn snail bad nicks. 
It's such a fun segment if you can pull it off in one go. You really feel like the characters as you dash through any obstacle Eggman throws your way, empowering you to keep pushing forward especially with how hard the music goes in the background. The final obstacle of Egg Rock Zone is the infamous room with the bottomless pit. On the other side of this endless corridor there's a switch we need to press to open the locked doors leading to the goal. The only issue is getting to said button isn't going to be easy. No Tails and Metal Sonic can literally fly over to the door with little trouble. Shadow on the other hand, even with the Chaos Knight just doesn't have enough reach. Thus we have to platform across the disappearing platforms that range from fairly sizable to literal strips of collision. Is it any wonder that I got a game over here? Even when doing this normally because of SIB2's quirky controls it can be a challenge to simply land on the platforms. So you can imagine just how tedious this was whilst we made a conscious attempt to actually avoid the rings. But after many attempts and a lot of pain I finally managed to beat this section ringless. To be honest, I don't even have any clear advice on how you should even tackle this. Because of how precise our jumps have to be, it's simply a game of memorising where the rings are along the platforms and just taking the leap. The more you panic and hesitate, the harder this section will be for you. You just have to keep moving forward and once you're close enough to the switch, you can skip the final few platforms. From here, all we have to do is dash through the final few traps of the stage, including more crushing blocks and the gears that you have to run through when the red strip is exposed, or else you'll be crushed. And with that, Egg Rock is clearable with 10 rings as our overall total. It really does suck, however we continue on to the final zone of the game, Black Core Zone. Now what's a classic Sonic game without a Metal Sonic encounter? Not a very good one. And SRB2 understands this, as we're treated to one of the coolest stages I've ever seen in a fan game, Black Core Act 1. Taking inspiration from his debut in Sonic CD, we're challenged by Metal to a race to see who's the fastest. Now in all honesty this serves as a glorified time trial, whilst Metal can break through the spikes he can't actually damage you, but given around 80 seconds before Metal Sonic reaches the goal, draining the area from oxygen leading to a death if you can't catch him in time. And the trap while still pretty challenging is by far a lot easier now than it was in the previous iterations of the game, sporting a sea of lava instead of constant bottomless pits. Now I already had a good idea of what I needed to do to beat Metal Sonic to the goal whilst also avoiding the rings. The track itself to its credit really doesn't shove ring trials in our path too much, so they're easy enough to dodge. I just needed to make sure we were well clear of Metal Sonic so that we could take our time in the harder platforming sections towards the end. So in order to do this we needed to take a bunch of shortcuts at the beginning half of the stage. Upon reaching the first lava room, rather than platforming around the intended pathway, we instead utilised Chaos Knight to jump straight to the higher ledge, giving us an already substantial lead over Metal Sonic. A lead that we're able to extend considerably as we harmlessly face through the Mario the Laser Gates in our way, that leads us to the hardest section of the stage. On the other side of this fast lava room is a shaft in the wall that will take us to the goal. The only problem is that in order to get there, we need to platform our way over, all the while contending with the gravity flip mechanic of Egg Rock Zone. Now you can actually spin that jump across the room and reach the shaft in the wall that way with both Shadow and Tails, and Fang the Sniper can even bounce on the lava harmlessly, but I just didn't feel comfortable in doing that with Shadow because of the lava. Fortunately we did have enough time to platform across with Metal Sonic clear out of sight. This section is infinitely harder if you don't change the camera settings, since you'll be otherwise forced to do a lot of the jumps whilst upside down. However, even with the normal gravity it's still pretty tricky to clear you should always make sure to get a slight run up on each jump just to make sure you're able to reach the next platform. Once we clear this final section door, all we have to do is race through the final corridor with metal now hot on our ass, clearing Act 1 without collecting any rings. Setting the elevator shaft that bears a strikingly resemblance to the arena of the Metal Sonic fight in Sonic the Fighters, we must confront Metal Sonic before we can take on Eggman and follow his plans once and for all. To be perfectly honest though, this fight really isn't all too bad. You see, for a large majority of the encounter, Metal will just straight up refuse to attack you, opting to just following you menacingly. Because of this you have ample opportunities to attack him, well, kind of. If you actually try to hit Metal Sonic, often times you'll find that he'll just evade you. The best way I can explain this is that you need to have some momentum behind your jump. If you're fast enough, Metal will enter a spiral and that's when he's open to attack. However, if you just try to jump at him without building any speed beforehand, it isn't going to do much of anything at all. Thanks to the home attack, we can mitigate the requirement instantly as Shadow locks onto Metal from afar. Because of this, Shadow is actually able to hit Metal Sonic 3 times per cycle that really cheeses the first phase of the fight. Although, you can hit Metal around 2 times per cycle with any of the base characters as well. When Metal Sonic finally gets around to attacking you, in the first phase he has two attacks, each with their own variation. Ascending above, he'll begin to charge up before launching a wave attack consisting of smaller energy blasts, either vertically or horizontally. Regardless, they are both avoided in pretty much the same way. As long as you run around the arena whilst he launches them, you should slip right by them. The second variation, he will launch a barrage of the waves in rapid succession, forcing you to run around the arena in order to avoid them. You do have to be careful here, as whilst the electrical fencing can damage you, it won't keep you in the arena. It's entirely possible to be 
push through them and into the bottomless pit below. His second phase is ironically far easier than the first. Whilst your means of attacking metal remain the same, instead of barraging you with a number of wave attacks, he will instead enter his boost mode from Sonic CD indicated by the flashing golden colour palette. During this, Metal will bounce from gate to gate in the arena for a time, eventually coming to a stop every 4-5 to five intervals which leaves him open to damage. If you're playing as any other character, your best bet is to just move around in a circle and most of the time Metal will simply run by you, but as Tails you can take flight the moment he starts bouncing, avoiding his advances completely. Unfortunately, we only have enough time to hit Metal Sonic one time during his cooldown, rather than the three in the previous phase. But after three more hits he goes down, allowing us to take on the final challenge of this ringless run, Brack Robotnik. Residing at the core of this zone stands Brack Robotnik, a towering mech that honestly looks like it was inspired from the Death Egg Robot looking thing from the Sonic OVA movie, which is a really nice callback if I do say so myself. Alas, that's all the good I have to say about this encounter. For a final boss, it serves its purpose incredibly well. Seriously, this thing is absolutely brutal at the best of times. Now you'll notice right away any attempts to attack Robotnik directly results in you taking damage because of the electricity surrounding it. We have to wait until the green water falls from one of the circular pads in the arena. Once this occurs by leading Robotnik into one of them. This erodes the electricity away, leaving him at the mercy of your onslaught, but even this is easier said than done. Even though Robotnik will follow you around the arena for the most part, he does so vaguely. What I mean by this is that most of the time he will enter the water as long as you're placed behind it. However, there are times where for some reason the AI simply refuses to do so, opting to just move side to side wasting time. And whilst you're expected to maintain your position until he finally walks into the liquid, he can just straight up combo you with a bunch of his attacks. It's so frustrating. On the topic of his attacks, the vast majority are based around fire or explosives that can actually lift you off the stage if you aren't careful. From flamethrowers to literal grenades, this man has it all. One thing I learned almost immediately is that you don't actually want to homing attack him as Shadow. Yeah, you can damage him, but the result will leave you vulnerable in the air, which gives him more than enough time to ruin your run. Instead, just jump into him and use the momentum from the ricochet to get out of his way. Towards the end of the first phase, you landed a cheap shot using the explosive grenades, which means we had to contend with his second phase, Ringless, and on our last line. In this phase, the fencing that kept us in the arena collapses, making it incredibly easy to die if he manages to hit you. Not only that, Robotnik also speeds up considerably and I swear he spawns his moves far more often in this phase as well. As long as you hide behind one of the three barrels, this can help a lot in avoiding the grenades. And after another onslaught of hits, he goes down. Escaping via the elevator shaft, Eggman's base comes crashing down, freeing the meteorite from its prison as we conclude this challenge with the knowledge that, no, it sadly isn't possible to beat Sonic Roblast 2 without collecting any rings. Overall, I had a ton of fun writing this challenge for the video. Yeah, it's unfortunate that we weren't able to complete Egg Rock Zone Ringless, but I'm still amazed that we were able to get this far in the first place. It's honestly a testament to how well designed each of the stages present in this game are, certainly for a fan game. In the future, we may return to this series and tackle the extra stages, to see if they're possible to beat Ringless once I've managed to unlock them all. As for now though, I think it's time for us to move on. So with that said, join us next week when we finally tackle Sonic Adventure 2, to see where it's possible to beat the hero story without collecting any rings. I I've had so many requests for this after you guys came out and supported the Adventure Challenge series, so I'm ecstatic to finally be bringing this to you all. However, before I end the video, I just want to take the time to give you guys a huge shout out and a thank you for all of the kindness and support you've brought to the channel. Recently, we've managed to crack 800 subscribers and just the reality of that blows my mind. I never imagined that we would ever get this far and it truly just means the world. I honestly can't thank you guys enough. For now though, I think I've taken up enough of your time, so take care. Stay safe and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye for now.